Hello everyone. So in this video, I will go over my solution to the problem name not assigning taken from today's code forces round. This problem is an excellent problem on trees and some very basics of prime numbers. So in this problem, we are basically given a tree with n vertices numbered from 1 to n and edges numbered from 1 to n minus 1. And you can see what the definition of a tree is. A prime tree is a tree where the weight of every path containing one or two edges is prime. So basically, every path uh, which, which contains just two nodes or which contains three nodes, the sum of those uh, two edges or that single edge should be prime. And this basically means that every edge should be prime and the sum of every two adjacent edges should be prime. That's what a prime tree is. And we need to check whether uh, the given tree can be made to be a prime tree by any assignment of edges. So we need to find out whether or not there is any valid assignment of edges such that the resultant uh, tree becomes a prime tree. If there is no such assignment, we'll print minus one. Otherwise, we'll print out the weights for those edges in the same order as the input. So let's uh, consider the first example where there's just uh, one edge. So in that case, we can just assign any prime number to the edge. And um, in another case, when we have uh, we have the this tree from the input, or uh, then the key idea like in in that case is to assign prime weights to each edges, obviously, um, because uh, we need to ensure that every path of length one is a prime path, it has a sum of weights to be prime. So first of all, we need to ensure that all the numbers are prime numbers. Secondly, if we consider two adjacent edges, edge one and edge two. The weight of edge 1 plus the weight of edge 2, so let's say w1 plus w2, this should be prime. Now we know that w1 is prime and we know that w2 is prime. So how exactly um, will, be, will we get a prime number from the sum of two edges? Well, the key idea is that since one number is a prime number and um, the other number is also a prime number. So if both those numbers are odd, then the resultant sum will be even and it will not be a prime number. That's why at least one of those two edges or should be prime and like I mean should be even. And that's why every edge should be two, like uh, every alternate edge should be a two. So we assign a two over here. Now what can we assign to the other edge? Well, we can just assign any uh, other prime number such that if you add two to it, you get another prime number. So for example, you could assign three. So you could assign three and you get that three plus two is equal to five. So uh, this works. And then again, you could repeat the process. For the node three, there are two edges which go outside. One edge is of weight two and the other edge will be of weight three. So that two plus three, which is just five is a prime number. So this is a valid assignment of edges. And in the third example, so the reason why the answer is minus one for the third example is because let's consider the node three. So clearly for the node three, there are three edges which go outside. And let's say that uh, one edge is a two because we know that two and three are going to be there uh, because two plus three is five and two and three are the two prime numbers which he chose. However, for the third edge, we cannot choose three to be a prime. Uh, we cannot choose the number three because three plus three is six, which is even. We can't also choose two because two plus two, which is four. And in general, if we choose any two prime numbers, P1 and P2, we know that one of them should be a two because P1 plus P2 should be prime. So let's say one of them is a two, like without loss of generality, you can assume one of them is a two. Even this could be a two. And we know that the other one should be a prime number, which is odd. Then the key idea is that the third edge cannot be a two because two plus two will give us a four, which is not prime. And it cannot also be another prime number other than two, because if it's a prime number other than two, 
then p plus q will be the sum of two odd numbers which will be even and won't be or basically uh, prime and that's why whenever you have a situation where you have the degree of the node or where you have the number of outgoing edges to be greater than or equal to 3 then we will just print minus 1 so that's the first key observation which is when the degree of the node um, is greater than or equal to 1 greater than or equal to 3 um, then we just print minus 1 so the degree of all nodes should be less than or equal to 2 that's the first observation now how does this help uh, this helps because this actually greatly simplifies the problem we no longer have a tree to work with that's the key idea we only have a kind of tree where every node has a degree 2 or 1 now if you consider a tree if you consider something like this uh, to be the tree then we know that there is no node which has two children except for the first node possibly except for the root node no other node will have two children and all the nodes will have only one child each node will have exactly one parent and one child and that's why the graph which you get is actually this very nice shape of a line it's a line graph basically and this line graph is what greatly simplifies the problem we just have a line to consider and we just need to perform the assignment of edges on this line and you can prove that if you have a tree if you have any connected undirected graph in which the degrees of all nodes are, are less than or equal to 2 and there are no cycles in that case uh, it, it's just going to be a line there would be a problem if 3 and 6 were connected like that could be a case however in that case it's not a tree i agree that 3 and 6 will still have degree less than or equal to 2 but that will be a cycle and that won't be a tree so this tree which we get is actually a line uh, because like a tree in which every node has degree less than or equal to 2 is a line and this helps us because we can essentially start from the beginning of the line and assign the edges in the alternating manner we can start from 2 and assign it to 3 and then back to 2 and then 3 and then 2 so in this way we know that any two adjacent edges will have a sum equal to 5 which is prime and every single edge has a sum which is equal to a prime number 2 or 3 and in this way um, if you are able to understand this diagram like that's the full solution that is the full idea so spend a few minutes understanding why the tree is a line and why just alternating 2s and 3s uh, along this tree will give the required output so we just need to find an efficient way to implement this diagram and um, the implementation may not be that easy but um, I I'll just walk you through the code because like there's nothing else uh, to see you just need to find out the first node with degree uh, with degree 2 and the second node I mean the first node with degree 1 this is the starting node so 3 is the starting node 6 is the ending node and then you repeatedly basically uh, traverse the adjacency list you use the adjacency list to hop uh, nodes at a time and you also need to store every edge and you need to store like the weight of the edge so uh, all of that just requires some implementation uh, it's simple only uh, it, there's nothing complicated uh, and I'll show you that through the code but the idea should be very clear so in the code for each test case I take in the value of n which is the number of nodes in the tree or in the line graph um, because we know that is going to be a line graph in the case when the answer is not minus 1 so we store the vector vector int adjacency list so this is the adjacency list representation of the graph and we use a map pair int int pause this map which goes from a pair 
of nodes to an index essentially stores the position of each edge in the input. So let's say you had an input of 4 comma 3 then pause of 4 comma 3 will be 2 because the second edge in the input is 2 I, I mean the second edge in the input is 4 comma 3 so that's what pause of 4 comma 3 will represent similarly pause of 3 comma 4 will also represent 2 because the order uh, the uh, order doesn't matter it's um, it's an undirected 3 so that's why pause of 4 comma 3 and pause of 3 comma 4 will be 2 that represents the position of each edge in the input then the uh, another variable which we use is the answer which stores answer or uh, basically stores for each edge from the input what is the weight assigned to that edge and that's given as per this uh, nomenclature so every edge starting from the start will be 2 and it will alternate between 2s and 3s and a degree uh, stores the degree of each node which is the number of adjacent nodes so you don't actually need a separate variable for degree but it's okay to keep one and we use a vector bool visited array which stores the uh, whether or not a particular node is visited so initially we set the degrees to be zero and the visited to be false and then for each i going from 1 to n minus 1 we take in the ith edge and to take in the ith edge we take in uv we add them to the adjacency lists we set the we increase the degrees of u and v and we set the position of each edge in the input or uh, u comma v to be i and v comma u to be i so that we can access the edge number in the input and we can use that edge number to store the answer because in the output will be in the order of each edge in the input that's why this pause will give us the location in, in inside the vector answer where we need to store the current answer so i'll show you that a little bit later or down the line so initially we check uh, whether degree of i is less than or equal to uh, 2 for all i that's what is stores so if any degree of i is greater than or equal to 3 is this false and we immediately break otherwise uh, start and end represent the beginning and ending of the line graph of the line or chain whatever you want to call it and uh, if the degree of i is equal to 1 then we know that i is either the start or the end of the chain and uh, if the start is minus 1 um, then we set uh, then we know that the start has not yet been given that's why we set the start to be i otherwise we know that the end is minus 1 and that's why we set the end to be i so this is just a, a way in which you can find the start and end chain uh, you can find the beginning and ending of the chain and um, in, in, in and then um, if it's not is so not is basically represents that uh, the condition is not met so there is some node with degree i greater than or equal to 3 so in that case we print minus 1 and we continue otherwise we set the current node to be s we set the current edge weight to be 2 because we know that when we start from the particular node we, when we start from the starting node 3 uh, the immediate edge weight is 2 that's what is stored in the variable weight so while the current node does not reach the end um, we know that the next node the next node will be the first value in the adjacency list however there's a catch so you store the first value in the adjacency list so adjacency list of current node of 0 will represent the next node however if the next node has been visited then this means that adjacency list of current node of 1 will store the next node that's because we could have um, if, if you consider the adjacency list of 2 you could have by mistake uh, I mean uh, from the input you could have stored 3 as the 0th element in the adjacency list and not 1 
So that's why if you get three as the zeroth element, you you need to ignore three and you need to consider only one. So that's why you'll consider the second element in the adjacency list in case the first element has been visited. So that will be your next node, and you set the answer of the index in the input where current node and next node appear to be equal to weight. So current node comma next node represents the edge. Pause of that edge gives the position of that edge in the input, and answer of that position will store the weight of the edge for that uh, inputted edge. So you should spend a minute understanding why uh, this will give us the correct position in the uh, input, and why storing answer of that position to be equal to weight, or uh, why that works. So uh, so that basically stores the weight of the edge in the input to be equal to the current weight that's essentially what we are doing and um, we and we need to basically update the information so we need to set the current node to be equal to the next node we need to mark the current node to be visited and we need to swap weights so if the current weight was 2 we need to make it 3 and if it was 3 we need to make it 2 and this is the uh, big loop basically uh, where we keep traversing uh, one edge at a time like uh, and we basically uh, perform all these updates so you need to understand why all these updates work and in the end just printing the answer of i for all i going from 1 to n minus 1 works because i represents the index in the uh, i represents the edge from the input and uh, each time we are storing the answer of the edge from the input to be equal to weight so all the weights are stored in the answer array and uh, i'll just submit this code to see that it gets accepted so as you could see my code got accepted i hope you like this problem and my solution if you had any doubts do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you